Good morning, and uh, we welcome you here to the Independence Congregation of the Restoration Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. Um, we're glad to have you with us. Last night was quite a night. We had storms move through the area, lots of trees and limbs down, power outages in places, and we pray and hope that uh, you were not affected or harmed uh, badly by any of this if you're here in the local area. And we know from watching the news that a tremendous amount of the country in the past several weeks have suffered uh, tremendously from uh, adverse weather. We here are very thankful uh, that have gathered here this morning that none of us were affected adversely uh, last evening, uh, but we do pray for those who are uh, dealing with uh, the aftermath of those storms uh, last night. And in some ways, those uh, storms occur in our lives as well. And we uh, trust and pray and hope that uh, the things that uh, you hear here and see here today will help you deal with those storms in your life. I know. Uh, and talking with people, sometimes they say, well, if Jesus was real, why does this happen? And, uh, you know, I don't really have all the answers to something like that. But what I can share is in the storms of my life, uh, Jesus has never left me alone. And um, that's very comforting. And uh, doesn't mean that I don't ask him why a lot when the storms of in life are happening but uh, he will help you in those storms and he will help you through those storms even when they're not instantly taken away but uh, uh, we'll have a prayer this morning and then we'll get going father in heaven we thank you for this beautiful day, this beautiful morning to gather here in this sanctuary to um, worship you and praise you and to learn about more how you would have us to live. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that those that are suffering this morning with the issues of these uh, adverse weather, that uh, you would be with them and comfort them that you would guide and direct them in uh, the things that they can do to uh, help get the mess cleaned up and that uh, receive the assistance they might stand in need of. For um, truly, Father, only you are able to provide all things that we stand in need of. And so, Father, as we uh, go through this day, I pray that you would help us be aware of the continual presence of your spirit in our lives for it is so easy to get distracted from your presence that um, oftentimes we feel alone and father i know you have never left me alone it's just been me choosing to turn away and so father be with our brother steve as he leads this class be with the services in the next hour following this and the speaker of the hour and father we just thank you for loving us so much in Jesus' name amen with that we'll let steve have the class thank you andy Uh, we uh, left off last time uh, at uh, verse 37 of the fourth chapter of Helaman. And um, much of this chapter so far has been, uh, well, in the third chapter too, has been how the people would suffer because of their unrighteousness and once they had suffered enough, they would repent and come back. The Lord would start blessing them again. They'd start prospering again. 
And within two or three or four years, because of the pride and the envy and the greed and, and all these things that entered in and seeker combinations and everything, within three or four years, the Lord brought suffering on them again because they lost the Lord and pointed out the fact, which is uh, probably the best scripture in regards to what I'm just about to say is uh, in Alma, verse, uh, Alma chapter 16, verses 132 to 142, where uh, Alma is uh, telling the, uh, the poor Zoramites, the ones that were kicked out of their synagogues, that uh, it was good that they were kicked out of their synagogues because sometimes if a people uh, are persecuted and suffering, they remember God. And it goes on to point out that even more blessed are they who, who humble themselves because of the word without being compelled to know. Well, that's what we're trying to do with this class. We're trying to present the word in such a way that it'll bring us into a condition that we can serve the Lord in our lives and be witness to the world, which actually was the commission of this church, was to restore the gospel and take it into all the world. And that means our neighbors around us if we're not sent forth. Okay? So now we're going to uh, begin the class today where we left off, uh, Helaman 4, verse 38. And this is in 11 BC. This is only 11 years before the birth of Christ. And it came to pass in the commencement of the 80 and first year, they did go forth again against this band of robbers and did destroy many. And they were also visited with much destruction. And they were again obliged to return out of the wilderness and out of the mountains unto their own lands because of the exceeding greatness of the numbers of those robbers which infested the mountains and the wilderness. Now the growth of this secret band of Gadiant and robbers is a direct result of transgression. Verse 40, And it came to pass that thus ended this year, and the robbers did still increase and wax strong, insomuch that they did defy the whole armies of the Nephites, and also of the Lamanites. And they did cause great fear to come unto the people upon all the face of the land. Yea, for they did visit many parts of the land, and do, did do great destruction unto them. Yea, did kill many, and did carry away others captive into the wilderness. Yea, and more especially their women and their children. And now this great evil which came unto the people because of their iniquity, did stir them up again in remembrance of the Lord their God. You know, that's not, this is only a little worse than what we've got it today with uh, the crime, the corruption in politics, the corruption in law enforcement, the corruption in all these things that are going around us today. Verse 43, And thus ended the eighty and first year of the reign of the judges. And in the eighty and second year, they began again to forget the Lord their God. And in the eighty and third year, they began to wax strong in iniquity. And in the eighty and fourth year, they did not mend their ways. And it came to pass in the 80 and 5th year. We're down to 7 BC now. And it came to pass in the 80 and 5th year. They did wax stronger and stronger in their pride and in their wickedness. And thus they were ripening again for destruction. And thus ended the 80 and 5th year. And thus we can behold how false and also the unsteadiness of the hearts of the children of men. See, the, 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 the specific points of the doctrine of, of Jesus Christ is faith, confession, repentance, baptism, and the one that's hardest of all, enduring to the end. These people could not endure. They'd get the confession, they'd get the repentance, they'd get the baptism right, and then they wouldn't endure. And that's for all of us who have been baptized and received the baptism of water and the Holy Ghost. That's where we are. 
We're in that period of endurance. Uh, verse 48. And thus we can behold how false and also the unsteadiness of the hearts of the children of men. Yea, we can see that the Lord in his great infinite goodness doth bless and prosper those who put their trust in him. <clears throat> yea, and we may see at the very time when he doth prosper his people, yea, in the increase of their flocks, of their fields, their flocks and their herds, and in gold and in silver and in all manner of precious things of every kind and art, sparing their lives and delivering them out of the hands of their enemies, softening the hearts of their enemies that they should not declare wars against them, yea, and in fine doing all things for the welfare and happiness of his people, yea, then is the time that they do harden their hearts and do forget the Lord their God and do trample under their feet the Holy One, Yea, and this because of their ease and their exceeding great prosperity. We saw that Steve, after night. Yeah, Andy. Pardon me for interrupting sure. you. Let's go back up to verse 49. It's just something there I've never seen before. Okay. Uh, increase of their fields, their flocks, and their herds, and in gold and silver, in all manner of precious things of every kind, and art. Yeah. I've never picked up on the on and that. art before. <laughs> I, I just, I, and I'm, I'm sorry to get distracted, but that just really, it's like, wait a minute, I've never. Well, that's a gift of God too. It, no, and I, I agree yeah. because, you know, uh, music is considered art. Um, there's a lot of things that are considered, art. acting is considered an art, even though I'm, I mean, that's not my bailiwick, and I don't really understand how acting is considered an art, uh, but I guess maybe it is. Uh, part of the, uh, the, the uh, things that we were talking about, the, the uh, secret combinations and all this, you know, I guess deception, you can be artful in the form of deception. Sure, you know, sure. I guess that acting could be an art because you're able to convince people what's not real is real uh, and so but no i just i just i'm i'm sorry yeah, again i apologize it just it just whoa wait a minute it's art but but yes i mean it but you, we look at um a lot of the things the artifacts that are found and and i mean it is they marvel at the quality and the intricacy of of all of that yeah, and that's, uh, you know, since you brought up art, uh, that's one of the reasons, besides it fits geographically with the movements of the people and the ups and the downs and this, that, and the other, archaeologists have accepted for a long time that the center of that civilization, the beginning of that civilization, was the, was the city of Kamenahuyu, which is mostly buried by Guatemala City now, because the art patterns throughout Latin America, they can trace them back and date them and this, that, and the other. They all transmit out from that location. From that, we can be assured that that was the city, Nephi, because that was their first high culture. Because Laman and Lemuel pretty much lived off the land. They weren't builders and such until until long after the destruction of the Nephites. They mostly inherited what the Nephites abandoned. Remember when Mosiah, when Mosiah left, and maybe I didn't emphasize this enough, when Mosiah left, he was leading a remnant. Everybody else had fallen either victim to the Lamanites or joined the Lamanites. And that was just a remnant he took into the land of Zarahemla. They were a minority among all these descendants of, of the tribe of Judah. This is why we have all this trouble with the kingmen. These people are claiming royal blood and they think they should have the right to rule. Just like Laman uh, believed he should have the right to rule because he was the firstborn son. You had something wrong? You know, it, it mentioned the, the art and there are times the woodworking I do becomes art. And it said when they were closer, improved in this and improved in that. And what I find when I'm the closest with God 
is when some of my pieces become the best. Yeah. There's just something about it that it suddenly becomes better. You know, we can take virtually any gift of God and use it for either good or evil. Art's, art's one of them. Uh, and uh, the condemnation somewhere in Isaiah when uh, the Lord is condemning the people. and uh, Or no, maybe it's... Anyway, speaking of the last days, and uh, one of the things it's speaking of is pretty pictures. Well, in those days, they didn't have any idea what television was. They didn't have any idea what a movie screen was. They didn't have any idea of what could come over a cell phone or what a cell phone was or even Morse code for that matter. And you see, in art, uh, the, human, the human perception appreciates art. We appreciate the structure of these sport beams coming up the walls of this church. We appreciate that uh, uh, leaded window back there. All things are made and created to bear witness of me. And by the way, that's in Genesis 666. Six, six. <laughs> Funny number. But I know this is an aside. But let's, let me look at Genesis 666 six, six here and see what it says. And you know, early on when I was preparing for this class, it was impressed on me to use this and I didn't see anywhere where it fit. But now I see where our conversation uh, Genesis 666 uh, six, six. well Genesis 6 verse 66 <clears throat> and behold all things have their likeness all things have their likeness and this is only in the inspired version this is not in any other version of the Bible and all things are created and made to a record of me boy what an important statement both things which are temporal and things which are spiritual, things which are in the heavens above and things which are on the earth and things which are in the earth and things which are under the earth, both above and beneath, all things bear record of me. That's why the marriage covenant is so important. The Lord never divorced his people, you know, even though most of the time his people have played the the role of the harlot. All things, all things. <clears throat> that. That, that's why, that, that's one of the, the, the most significant proofs there is that uh, any other form of sexual per, sexually perverted activity is abomination in the sight of God. That's why women in priesthood is abomination in the sight of God. Not because there aren't a lot of good women. It's because it breaks the pattern that the Lord established in the very creation of the relationship that he wants to have with his bride, which is us. Yeah. But, uh, and, uh, that uh, Genesis 6, verse 66 there in the inspired version of the Bible that we just read, that verse there is part of, of why I believe God never leaves us alone. Mm -hmm. I think it is a gift when one can recognize the hand in God in whatever you're viewing, whether it's a sunrise, a sunset, the power of the storms that we endured last night is, is a testimony of the power of God. It's also a testimony of his hand of protection. And, and there, I'm sure there are those this morning that question, how can I say that? Because I've got a tree laying on the roof of my house. There's one right over down the street here that we saw earlier this morning. Um, part of that is maybe that tree could have fallen on your bedroom and killed you in your bed versus just taking the corner of the roof off your house. And so, uh, no, that was one. Yeah, we didn't get that far up Chrysler, <laughs> but but I mean it's from my house to Donnie's house down at 291 and 40 to 
Steve's house up here a few blocks away over here, the triangle that I drove this morning, there's evidence of the power of the storm all over, and I'm sure there's other parts of town even more so than here. And so I understand why people can say, you know, why did this happen to me, you know? And at the same time, I think we don't always recognize how much worse it could be. But, but all things were created to bear testimony of God. And that three-letter word with just two letters, A, L, and L again, mm -hmm. encompasses a lot. It encompasses everything. Everything. And so everything. In and through all things. Yes, in and through all things. And sometimes it's not just the things of nature, but it's the activities that, um, that happen as well. You know, I'm sure, uh, I, I'm sure, I'm sorry that the signs aren't up anymore, but when I used to walk outside a lot for exercise early in the morning, I'd walk back yard after yard after yard and have these signs up saying, this city is the city of my God. I'm sure those people were praying for protection for this place because this is the place of the new Jerusalem. And if the Lord doesn't protect it, you know, the promise is that we'll inherit the Gentiles. That's a temporal thing. We're certainly not going to inherit them spiritually. That's a temporal thing. If, 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 if we weren't praying for this protection and if there were no righteous in this city, it would be destroyed just like everything else. But if we're going to have anything to inherit from the Gentiles, we better be praying for this place. Well, let's move on. Uh, uh, Jim and Laura, I just read uh, Genesis 6, verse 66, which is only found in the inspired version. And uh, you can read that for yourself, and, and I'll, I'll go on with uh, reading out of the Book of Mormon. It's, that's where God is, basically God is in all, all things bear witness of God. Uh, let's see. 49, I think, Steve. Okay, 49. Well, let me, let me pick up at 49 anyway. Yea, and we may see at the very time when he doth prosper his people, yea, in the increase of their fields, their flocks and their herds, and in gold and in silver and in all manner of precious things of every kind and art, sparing their lives and delivering them out of the hands of their enemies, softening the hearts of their enemies that they should not declare war against them, yea, and in fine doing all things for the welfare and the happiness of his people. Is that why this place is being protected? Yea, then is the time that they do harden their hearts and do forget the Lord their God and do trample under their feet the Holy One. Yea, and this because of their ease and their exceeding great prosperity. Boy, where have we heard that word ease before? At ease in Zion? Woe, woe, woe to those who are at ease in Zion. Incidentally, the, the Hebrews didn't have words like good, better, best. They used repetition. So woe, woe is pretty strong. Whoa, whoa, whoa was the ultimate. And thus we see that except the Lord doth chasten his people with many afflictions, yea, except he doth visit them with death and with terror and with famine and with all manner of pestilences, they will not remember him. Now, if you have your Doctrine and Covenants with you, turn to... Uh, Section 83, verse 7. And pardon me a minute, I've got a senior problem here.
Now remember what I just read. Yea, except he doth visit them with death and with terror and with famine and with all manner of pestilences, they will not remember him. Doctrine and Covenants 83.7 And now I give unto you a commandment to beware concerning yourselves to give diligent heed to the words of eternal life. What is that? Every word that proceedeth forth from the mouth of God. You're going to hear that from me as long as you'll tolerate me standing behind this pulpit. To give diligent heed to the words of, words of eternal life. For you shall live by every word that proceedeth forth from the mouth of God. Where did I read that from just last Sunday? I read it from section 95 Verse 3, A and E, exact same words. For you shall live by every word that proceedeth forth from the mouth of God. For the word of the Lord is truth, and whatsoever is truth is light. <clears throat> and whatsoever is light is spirit, even the spirit of Jesus Christ. And the spirit of Jesus Christ giveth light to every man that cometh into the world. And the Spirit of Jesus Christ, I'm adding the of Jesus Christ because they've left it out. And the Spirit of Jesus Christ enlighteneth every man through the world that hearkeneth unto the voice of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. That's our conscience to begin with. And everyone that hearkeneth to the voice of the Spirit cometh unto God, even the Father. That's why Christ came here, to call men to himself, or could have called men to God. That's why Christ came. Everything clear through his crucifixion and resurrection was for that purpose. And the Father teacheth him of the covenant which he has renewed and confirmed upon you, which is confirmed upon you for your sakes and not for your sakes only, but for the sake of the whole world. Now, the covenant that he's talking about there uh, is uh, the covenant in uh, 83, 6, the preceding section, or the preceding verse, 83, 6, C to I, and I'm going to read that. 83.6c, for whoso is faithful unto the obtaining these two priesthoods of which I have spoken and magnifying their calling are sanctified by the Spirit unto the renewing of their bodies. And they become the sons of Moses and of Aaron and the seed of Abraham and the church and kingdom and the elect of God. And also all they, you could substitute the word sheep there, and also all the sheep who receive this priesthood, that is receive the testimony of the priesthood, because we as priesthood aren't to speak unless we're motivated by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And also all they, the sheep, who receive this priesthood, receiveth me, saith the Lord. For he that receiveth my servants, which is the priesthood, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth my father. And he that receiveth my father, receiveth my father's kingdom. Therefore, all that my father hath shall be given unto him. That's a promise to us. That's a covenant to us. If we uphold our side of the covenant. And covenants can only be broken by death. That's where they differ from a contract. The only way you can choose to get out of this covenant, since, or we can choose to get out of this covenant, because we've all entered into this covenant through baptisms of water and the Holy Ghost, is to die spiritually. That's the only way we can get out of that covenant. Uh, I forgot where I was, so I'm going to start with F. 
Therefore all that my father hath shall be given unto him. And this is according to the oath and the covenant which belongeth to the priesthood. Therefore all those who receive the priesthood receive this oath and covenant of my father, which he cannot break, neither can be removed, because covenants can only be broken by death. God is eternal. He can't die. The only ones who can die are us. We're the only ones who can break the covenant. And we do that by not living according to every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. That's our covenantal conditions. But whoso breaketh this covenant after he hath received it, and altogether turneth therefrom, shall not have forgiveness of sins in this world, nor in the world to come. And all those who come not unto this priesthood, which ye have received, which I now confirm upon you who are present this day by mine own voice out of the heavens, and even I have given the heavenly hosts and mine angels charge concerning you. Okay, now let's skip back down into 7 again. 7e. And the Father teacheth him of the covenant, which he has renewed and confirmed upon you. Let me see here. Uh, let's go back. Let's uh, restart this with uh, paragraph C. And the Spirit giveth light to every man that cometh into the world. Now that's the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of Jesus Christ enlighteneth every man through the world that hearken unto the voice of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. That Spirit of Jesus Christ is given by the Holy Ghost. It's given by the ministry of angels. And it's given by ministers ministers chosen and ordained under that authority. And we tend to get away from that. That this priesthood actually has a unique authority. Another place that this is the only church upon the face of the planet in which I am well pleased. And everyone that hearkeneth to the voice of the Spirit cometh unto God, even the Father. And the Father teacheth him of the covenant which he has renewed and confirmed upon you, which is confirmed upon you for your sakes, and not for your sakes only, but for the sake of the whole world. And the whole world lieth in sin and groaneth under the darkness and under the bondage of sin. And by this you may know they are under the bondage of sin, because they come not unto me. For whoso cometh not unto me is under the bondage of sin. And whoso receiveth not my voice is not acquainted with my voice and is not of me. And how is the voice delivered? By angels, by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, by priesthood called and ordained to be his spokesman. To stand in his stead in the church. That's why women priest, that's why women priesthood is inappropriate. Because you turn the marriage of the, the similitude of the marriage of the Lamb into a lesbian marriage. Because the priesthood stands in the stead of Christ as the groom in Christ's absence. And by this you may know the righteous from the wicked and that the whole world groaneth under sin and darkness, even now. And your, times and your minds in times past have been darkened because of unbelief, and because you have treated lightly the things you have received. Do we treat lightly the things that we have received? Because of unbelief, and because you have treated lightly, the things you have received, which vanity and unbelief hath brought the whole church under condemnation. And this condemnation resteth upon the children of Zion, even all, and they shall remain under this condemnation 
until they repent and remember the new covenant, even the Book of Mormon, and the former commandments which I have given them. Now this is given in September 22, 1832. Not only to say, but to do according to that which I have written, that they may bring forth fruit meat for their father's kingdom, Otherwise, there remaineth a scourge and a judgment to be poured out upon the children of Zion, for shall the children, for shall the children of the kingdom pollute my holy land? This land that we're praying to be spared the destructions? Shall the children of the kingdom pollute my holy land? Verily I say unto you, Nay. Now let's turn to uh, Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42, um, verses 18 to 25. Isaiah 42, 18 to 25. Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that ye may see. For I will send my servant unto you who are blind, yea, a messenger to open the eyes of the blind, and unstop the ears of the deaf. And they shall be made perfect, notwithstanding their blindness, if they will hearken unto the messenger, the Lord's servant. I always thought that meant Jesus Christ. But servant is defined in uh, chapter 43, verses 10 to 12. Chapter 43, 10 to 12. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. So we collectively are the witnesses and it is our witness that is the servant whom I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he, that I am he. Before me there was no God formed and neither shall there be after me. Even I, even I am the Lord and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. There's a qualification in that verse 12. I have declared and have saved and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. When we're worshiping the things of this world, we don't have that promise. I have declared and have saved and have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Okay, back to chapter 42, uh, verse 20. And they shall be made perfect, notwithstanding their blindness, if they will hearken unto the messenger, the Lord's servant. Uh, the Lord's servant, that's us. That's the witnesses. That's the witnesses of the word. Here's the word. Here's the word. And the word that's given to us when need be for the edification of the people and our own edification. Thou art a people seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears to hear, but thou hearest not. The Lord is not well pleased with such a people. 
But for his righteousness' sake, he will magnify the law and make it honorable. Thou art a people robbed and spoiled. Thine enemies, all of them, have snared thee in holes, and they have hid thee in prison houses. They have taken thee for a prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith restore. The Book of Mormon says that uh, Satan will uh, lead us with flax and cords down to hell and bind us with the chains. Those are the prisons. Those are the prisons we put ourselves in we, because we put other things before the Lord our God. Thou art a people robbed and spoiled, thine enemies, all of them. That's Satan and all of his servants, and he has plenty of servants in the earth today. Thine enemies, all of them, have snared thee in holes, and they have hid thee, hid thee in prison houses. Many of us are imprisoned to the television set. Some people are imprisoned to pornography. Some are imprisoned to... Uh, what? Drugs. drugs. Prison to drugs. Imprison to alcohol. Imprison to tobacco. Sugar. Energy drinks. <laughs> what? <laughs> you go ahead with no, yeah. Randy, I'm and, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. And thank you, Brother Donnie, for being such a good sport. <laughs> but but that is uh, an example of, is a, uh, we were talking earlier this morning about how we slice and dice. Well, I don't do these particular things. So that is what holiness and righteousness is. And there's so many things, whether it's activities, uh, something that we ingest into our body or whatever that can become uh, addictive um, you know um, there's just so many things that uh, we're capable of wasting time on and what uh, along with some of the conversation we were having before uh, class started it, part of the struggle in dealing uh, with each situation as its own situation what what one man does is labor and work to provide for his family can become a, a God to another person. It's hard to separate that, well, if um, one man's, I'm just gonna use craftsmanship because it talks about gods of the making of our own hands. Yeah. Okay, uh, and, and uh, Roland's a woodworker and he mentioned earlier in this class even that the closer he is to God, the better his efforts and, and his product that he turns out mm -hmm. is. And that's a fine line between acknowledging the gifts of my talents to God versus becoming caught up in look how well I can do and mm -hmm. switching from being blessed by the Lord to I am the one that does this. And so um, while it's nice to have blanket policy to, to cover everything, as in those things become as individuals as we are. Again, because one man's ability and what he uses as labor to provide for his family can become a different individual's downfall because of their pride of what they can do. And sometimes what I have found is, and, and as the older I get, the more I actually struggle with this, is I have a lot of experience, I can do a lot of things, and people want to help, or if I'm at work where there's a team of us working, allowing another person to do the task, and when they're doing it a way different than what I would do. I, and Donnie and I work, <laughs> but, but it's not only when Donnie and I work together. I mean, this is what the guys I work with sure. at work, you know, wait a minute. 
you know, sometimes standing back and letting someone else make a contribution, especially when I don't deem it as well as what I could do, is difficult. Um, I had an experience a number of years ago. I became friends with a man that had a hot dog uh, cart, and he was outside the Lowe's store down here, free ad for Lowe's. But anyway, uh, I, I equally shop Home Depot as well, so we'll get them all, and Menards, we'll get the big three in there. But, and I have done Sutherland's too, because it's a local company, but I think I've got them all four in there now. But anyway, uh, one day he says, hey, I just want to give you, you know, hey, let me, let me get you lunch. And it's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good, man. You're, you're making a living. And the Lord spoke, and we went back and forth for a couple <laughs> of minutes there. And the Lord says, man, this guy wants to do something for you. Let right, him absolutely. do something. You have to, sometimes we have to be the receiver, not just sure. continually be the giver. And that's a difficult thing to do. It becomes a pride issue, actually, in some ways. And so um, we have to be very careful because I have found it so easy to read scripture and just accuse a broad spectrum of people. And, and it's like, um, and I'm not saying the scriptures misstated or whatever i'm just saying we have to be very careful that we don't fall in a trap that these are this is my list of holiness and righteousness and everybody outside of that is condemned when we ourselves have a list probably on the other side of what we are guilty of right um yeah we're on, uh, make it brief if you will because i'm not in a good stopping spot <laughs> I knew a woman who took so much pride in how she took care of her children that she literally thought that she had been a perfect parent and never made mistakes. Flat out said it came as a shock to her that she had ever made a mistake as a mother. And she worshipped her relationship with how she could have a parent she was to the point that she missed what the purpose of being a parent was. She was a perfect parent. If there was a problem, it wasn't her fault, ever. And I personally know that I was not a perfect parent. I wish I had been, but I wasn't. And we can literally get into worshiping any project that we do to the point that we lose sight of the reason for trying to do it perfectly. The reason for trying to do it perfectly is to bring honor and glory to God, period. Yeah, thank you. Uh, a couple other points I wanted to make on that, what this reading out of the 83rd uh, section, um, to find it here. Oh, uh, 8A, that's uh, section 83, 8A. And your minds in time past have been darkened because of unbelief, and because you have treated lightly the things you have received, which vanity and unbelief hath brought the whole church under condemnation. And this condemnation rests upon the children of Zion, even all. And they shall remain under this condemnation, until they repent and remember the new covenant, even the Book of Mormon and the former commandments which I have given them, not only to say but to do according to that which I have written, <clears throat> that they may bring forth fruit meet for their father's kingdom, otherwise there remaineth a scourge and a judgment to be poured out upon the children of Zion. For shall the children of the kingdom pollutely, uh, pollute my holy land? I say unto you, nay. Well, that was in September of 1832. By 1833, they were being driven off the land because they were polluting it by their disbelief. And don't think that the same thing can't happen again. You go to 3rd Nephi 106, uh, 3rd Nephi 9, 106, the separation begins among my people. And I counted up, I have 35 references written in my margins there 
that support that. 35 scriptures say that the separation is going to begin at my house. So when that ring of, uh, when that bright red ring that many call a ring of fire in error, because we don't know if it's fire or not, the vision says bright red ring, when that happens, there will be some that are able to remain and others must flee. And that bright red, that bright red ring could occur, could occur to any one of us tonight if we don't wake up in the morning. It's the same thing. And all of this together puts an onerous responsibility on the priesthood. We must be pure in everything we say and do. Cleanliness, eating habits, the way we speak to one another, the way we present ourselves in the world. Because if we're Johnny Good Shoes here and then go out and swap bad, uh, you know, bad stories with people in the workplace, I'll guarantee you the word will get back. It'll get back. We have to live exemplary lives. If we are going to stand in the stead of Christ, in His stead, as the groom of the church, His bride, we must be like Him. If we're not like Him, we're not standing in His stead. And that's what we're called to do, is to stand in the stead of Christ in His absence, physically, because if we do that, his presence will be there spiritually. Because the words that come out of our mouths will be words of righteousness. And if the words coming out of our mouths aren't the words of righteousness, then we're falling short of the covenant that we entered into when the hands were laid upon our heads and set us apart. Okay, let me find a quitting place here. And uh, Okay, we did verse uh, 52, Helaman 4, 52. And thus we see that except the Lord doth chasten his people with many afflictions, yea, except he doth visit them with death and with terror and with famine and with all manner of pestilences, they will not remember him. Oh, how foolish and how vain and how evil and devilish and how quick to do iniquity and how slow to do good are the children of men. Yea, how quick to hearken unto the words of the evil one and to set their hearts upon the vain things of the world. Yea, how quick to be lifted up in pride. Yea, how quick to boast and do all manner of that which is iniquity. Uh, for those of you taking notes, you might want to jot down... Uh, by this verse, uh, 3 Nephi 3, uh, 10 to 20. 3 Nephi 3, 10 to 20. Uh, Alma 3, 93 to 98. Alma 3, 93 to 98. And 1 Nephi 3, 126. First Nephi 3, 126. I was going to read these, but we've run out of time. Um, 55. And how slow are they to remember the Lord their God and to give ear unto his counsels. Yea, how slow to walk in wisdom's paths. Behold, they do not desire that the Lord their God who hath created them should rule and reign over them notwithstanding his great goodness and his mercy towards them, they do set at naught his counsels, and they will not that he should be their guide. Uh, we're going to uh, start with verse uh, 57 next, next week. Is next week Communion Sunday? Yeah. yeah, it is. In two weeks, we'll start there. Thank you very much.